Hey, how's it going, Wayfinders? Today we are diving into a brief overview and recap of the new quests, bosses, and weapons added with the mid-season content update number two, featuring the Reaver King. There is a lot to unpack and really cool progression of the lore as well as some new mechanics with the introduction of a triple imbuement mutator. The story quests continue with the Wormwood questline. You'll need to head into the Hollow Heart and collect Hollow One residue from the Hollow One mobs in the Lost Zone and complete the Leyline event. After collecting the residue, you'll return back to Greymourn and prepare some elixirs so that she can continue a ritual in which she's briefly overtaken. After this, you are tasked with crafting a Gloom Trace for Wormwood, one of the new bosses added in this update. Wormwood is a giant tree-like enemy that looks really cool and is the biggest boss so far in Wayfinder. Wormwood fires out a beam of green energy that can prove quite lethal while also summoning various enemies including Hollow Ones and Hollow Horrors from seeds that spawn in the arena. You'll want to make sure to avoid the beam and block or evade the various telegraphs. One of the mechanics include being able to attack the seeds and move them outside of the green growth on the ground, which prevents additional adds from spawning from the seeds. However, if you're confident in your power and skills, you can focus on the boss and cleave down the adds should you choose. Wormwood drops new accessories and essences, including the Rose and Thorn Essence and Nightshade Essence, as well as a new Echo which provides a heal over time for players standing in the effect, and a few new crafting materials needed for the new weapons. Another important drop from Wormwood is the Potion Recipe for Greater Primeval Elixir 3, which increases the max ability power increase up to 810 for 60 seconds. After completing the Wormwood questline, you'll begin the Roots of Evil Chain, which involves entering into various Lost Zones with the new Triple Shadow Mutator, Gloom Collapse. Mechanics of this mutator requires you to carry a torch with you throughout the dungeon and loses energy over time. If you are outside of the torch, you will take damage, so carrying the torch is a must, and you can replenish the torches by defeating enemies and clearing out Gloom Patches. After defeating the summoned enemy, the patch will then glow with gold energy, refilling your torch. Once you're done defeating various Hollow One Roots with the Gloom Collapse Mutator, you'll need to return to Greymourn and are tasked with creating a Gloom Trace to hunt Otterok the Reaver King. This is where you'll begin the final battle story quest where you battle to take down the Reaver King and Marrow. This fight is a lot of fun and has a few different sequences to keep track of. As you enter the arena, the Reaver King will begin casting a giant AoE that pulses damage and summons various Talons and Bloodletters. Otterok will occasionally teleport behind the player while the additional enemies attack you from afar. After defeating Otterok, Marrow will jump down and bring the Reaver King back to life, and then he will jump onto Marrow. There will be new telegraphs and attacks to avoid, and you'll need to reach a certain health threshold to cause the Reaver King to jump off of Marrow. At this point, you will be fighting both at once while avoiding both of their attack sequences. The most important part to remember about this fight is that in order to truly defeat the Reaver King and Marrow, you will have to kill them both at the same time within a few seconds. If you only defeat one, the other boss will revive the defeated one and continue the encounter. There are two new Echoes to earn from this fight which include Otterok the Deathless Echo that spawns a Spectral Axe that does physical damage and the Marrow Echo that grants an additional 10% crit rating and 20% crit power for 10 seconds when breaking an enemy. There is also a brand new artifact that looks really cool and if equipped grants a crit rating buff the less resilience an enemy has up to a max of 10%. There are also new accessories, boss resources, and a new potion, Greater Arcanic Elixir 3, which increases weapon power up to a max of 810 for 60 seconds as well. That wraps up the main story quests. Let's take a look at the three new side quests also added in this update. A Ruthless End can be picked up from Arsenal and sends you to investigate the Highlands. After speaking with various NPCs, you'll make your way into the Bloodworks to find a mysterious axe. This continues with the Eclipse questline where you'll farm essences and speak with Greymourn and eventually retrieve Eclipse. The next side quest involves speaking with Seeker of Ala in Deepwood Holt and completing some research tasks. you notice that something is wrong with Avala during your conversations and you'll learn more from Lord Halar in your attempts to save Avala by seeking research, finding lost mementos, and coming to terms with some new lore provided through these quests. I will have a lore video in the future that dives into much of this in more detail as this questline in particular was exciting, surprising, and provided some new insights to opposing views between Omen and Lord Halar. The final side quest is a hidden quest that starts when you pick up a ring in a lost zone. The questline tasks you with solving various riddles and looking for hidden rings in specific lost zones or hunts. I have a detailed guide video for this quest linked in the description to help you with completion 
so make sure to check that out if you need help with the Forgotten Rings quest. Next, let's take a look at the new weapons also introduced in this update. First up, we have Legacy, a sword and shield weapon that was forged in the dawn of the world before humanity existed. It was made by Eldrin Hands and burns with eternal light. The weapon ability Phalanx protects the Wayfinder and all nearby allies with a damage shield absorbing all damage and preventing impacts until the shield is broken. The strength of this ability is increased by each latent power pip consumed. Rose and Thorn is a new set of daggers and were once wielded by the legendary Blade Dancer of the Golden Airy. Blood sustains the petals woven into the daggers. The weapon ability Thorn Blossom slams the daggers into the ground and enemies inflicted with Blossom will take additional damage each time they are hit for 10 seconds. Eclipse is a two-handed axe that was forged in the vaults of the Deep Eldrin and infused with Power of Shadow. It yearns to consume light and life. The weapon ability Steel Vortex throws the axe spinning in a vortex dealing damage to multiple enemies then returning to the Wayfinder. I am currently bugged as my Eclipse weapon does not show and is invisible, so I could not get you the first-hand footage of this weapon. Nightshade is now craftable and is Ven's signature weapon. This is a burst rifle equipped with Wyvern's Fury ability, in which the weapon becomes fully automatic shooting poison-infused bullets that stack damage over time. Along with all of the new content added with this update were many bug fixes and changes with the most notable being decreased load times and increased epic accessory drop rates. It's exciting to progress further into the lore and story of Otterok the Reaver King, Greymorn, Wormwood, Eclipse, and Seeker of Alla. We'll be covering future updates in great detail, so make sure to subscribe and stay up to date with all things Wayfinder. As always, wish you all the best, thank you for watching, and see you in the next one.